Today we're going to do a lesson on the caged system. And what the caged system is, is it's a way of actually using your open chords to find uh, movable chord shapes and scale patterns as we go up the neck. Caged is basically an acronym. It's uh, uh, made up of each of the chords in order. C, for your open C chord, A, G, B, e, and D. All right, your basic open open major chords. The first one, C, you could all open open C major. One of the, these are all chords that if you've been playing guitar for any length of time, you probably learned these in the very beginning. These for the first set of chords, you know, I all usually call them campfire chords because this is like the, you know, kumbaya kind of, that kind of stuff. Uh, the C chord, if we play just a regular old C major, your first finger and your third finger in that chord shape are both on the C note, which is the root of that C chord. If I was to take these two fingers and just play those two strings, the second and the fifth strings, and just move it up, I've got a C sharp. Here's D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, and so on. We can actually use this as a root pattern for scales. Like if I was on the D, Here's D minor pentatonic. And those are the roots. D major pentatonic off of those two roots. Yeah, and then also we can play like a D7 chord, a D9 chord, D major chord. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. But basically all we're doing today is we're going to learn the root patterns and then we're going to build off of these later. So our first one is C. A our open A major chord, we've got our note on the uh, fifth string open, and then we've got our note on the third string second fret. Now if I was to move this up, it's going to look like this. My first finger is on the fifth string first fret, my third finger is on the third string third fret. And I can keep moving up, that's A sharp, here is B, here is C. Now, when I play the C chord, you notice that my third finger, when it's right here on C, is in the same place that my first finger for that A shape, or that, what we call the second pattern, is moved up. Just a little bit of review, this is C. This is the open A pattern. Here it is when we've moved up to A sharp, B, and C. We're going to call the C pattern pattern one, as well as the C pattern. This is pattern two, this is the A pattern. Uh, it's based off of the A chord, but we've moved it up towards the C. Now it may seem like I'm repeating this a lot, but usually when I teach this to students, this is the part that gets kind of confusing. So there's going to be a, a whole lot of repetition in this. Now C A G, G is the third letter of the word caged. We've got our open G major chord. Now the first and sixth strings when you play them open, they're both E's. They're the same note. So if we have a note on the first string, it's also going to be the note on the same note on the sixth string. This is a G chord. We have roots on the first and sixth strings, and then also the third string open, which is uh, the, just the open G string. If I were to move it up one fret, it's going to look like this, kind of funky. We got our first finger on the first fret on the third string. I've got my fourth finger on the fourth fret on the first string, and then I'm putting my third finger on the uh, fourth fret on the sixth string. I'm basically just taking this idea and moving it up a fret. Now, part of the key to making a stretch like this work is, see where my thumb is? It's not back here. If you put your thumb back here, it closes the hand up. If you put your thumb more in the center of your hand, you're going to get a lot more reach. You can kind of see, you know, if I put my first finger on the first fret, I can reach all the way up here to the seventh fret. And there's two things that are helping out. One of them, the thumb is here, and then the other one you can kind of see right here, I get all the reach there. If your first finger is pointing back at your face when you're looking down at the neck, your pinky doesn't have a whole lot of stretch. If it's pointed more in line with the fret, or like straight up and down, you're going to get a lot of reach this direction. You can kind of see what I'm doing here, second fret, and then I'm playing the these guys here. Um, this really isn't a lesson on, on hand technique, but a lot of times when I have students try to play this particular root pattern, it becomes an issue, so I figured we'd kind of talk about it right now. Um, just remember that you get more reach between these two fingers than you do just by trying to 
do that. You know, if your thumb's over here and you're doing this, pinky's not going anywhere. But you can kind of see as I just move my thumb into the center of the hand, I get all kinds of wild stretches. Uh, for right now, we've got our our G shape root pattern. Let me bring you back to where we're at. We're at G major. We had notes on the first and sixth strings and third open string. If I were to move that up, we've got the first finger on the first fret third string, and then uh, the pinky is on the uh, fourth fret first string, and the third finger is on the fourth fret sixth string. If I move it up one, it becomes A, A sharp or B flat, B, and then here is C. What I'm going to do is as I go up the uh, the series of, of root shapes, we're going to learn them in the open position, but then we're also going to move them up so that they're all in C, so you can see how they all interconnect. So pattern one, which is C, is right here. Pattern two, which is the A shape, but we've moved it up to C, is like that. And then we're going to once again take our first finger and put it where our third finger was at, and that gives us pattern three for C, which is the G shape that we've just moved all the way up here. The next note or chord that we're going to be building off of is your open E major chord. Uh, once again we have the open first and sixth strings and it just so happens that the fourth string, this note right here, uh, is, is the other root. So I'm playing right here, I've got the sixth string open, the fourth string second fret, and then the first string open. If I was to move it up to an F, just up one fret out of the open position, uh, you could do it a couple ways. One of them is just to play just the notes that we're doing. I've got my first finger on the first fret sixth string, my fourth finger on the fourth uh, string third fret, and then my middle finger on the first string uh, first fret. You can also just bar your first finger. The one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to strum everything because then we're getting all these other notes that aren't the roots, and we're just looking for the roots in these chord shapes. If I wanted to play an F major, I'd be playing the whole chord, or F minor, or any of these bar chords. Right now, we're just looking for the root within that. So if we take this and we move it up, that's F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, here's the C. All right, so we have pattern one, which is the C shape, pattern two, which is the A shape, but we're playing C notes. Notice that they sound the same. Pattern three, which is the G shape, but still the C notes. And now we've got four, which is pattern four, which is the E shape that we've moved all the way up until it's a C chord, or a set of C roots. The last one, the D, based off of your open D chord, and the roots within this one are the open D string, which is the fourth string, and your second string, third fret, where your third finger typically is when you play this. If we were to move it up, I've got my first finger on the uh, first fret fourth string and my fourth finger on the fourth fret second string. Here's E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B. Here is C. Notice that this note here shares like the third finger in pattern four. So that's pattern five. So we have pattern one, pattern two, pattern three, pattern four. Here's pattern five based off of the D. So we've gone C, A, G, E, D, and then we just repeat. Here is C again, just an octave higher. There's pattern two, which is A. And then there's pattern uh, uh, pattern three, which is the G. And I can also, you know, you'd never really play too much up in there. But that's basically the order of these root patterns. Um, as we go on, uh, we're going to start building scales and stuff off of them. Uh, but one thing that, if you've been doing my lessons for any length of time, you can look back and like that home position minor pentatonic or blues scale that we end up using so much of. That's actually pattern four or out of the E. That's where your roots are in that. All right, uh, the next one up. All right, that's pattern five. This one here. All right, that's pattern one. 
uh, you can go back and take a look at any of those other lessons and you're going to start realizing I've been using those patterns uh, this whole time. Now we're actually going to start getting into learning how to organize this stuff and learning how to build your theory off of it.